What's up guys, in this episode of Keeping Up With The... No, we're not doing diseases this time. Instead, we're going to take a look at a very famous yet special syndrome that has affected about 0.1% of the worldwide population. Let's meet our patient, Miss Erica Gilbert. She's a 37-year-old lawyer who is married and is currently in the 10th week of her pregnancy. Hello Erica, what brings you here today? Uh, doctor, I'm a bit worried. I... I overheard someone saying that my baby could be cha-cha because I'm getting old. Erica, I'm sorry you had to experience that. But do not worry, you are in safe hands. What, what, what can I do to check if my baby is safe, doctor? It's good that you're here early. We can run some screening tests to check on your baby. So, what is the most appropriate screening test to be done for Erica? Take note, she's in the 10th week of her pregnancy. There are several prenatal screening tests such as the maternal blood test and a morphology scan which will help the doctor identify whether or not the fetus has developed a Down syndrome. A maternal blood test can be carried out on the 10th week of pregnancy whereas a morphology scan would usually take place around the 18th to 20th week. Upon conducting a maternal blood test on the 10th week of pregnancy, the doctor is taking a look out for certain proteins that may be elevated in the mother's serum. For example, the PAPPA and HCG protein could be indicative for a higher risk of the child or the fetus developing Down syndrome. A morphology scan which is carried out on the 18th to 20th week would usually be an ultrasound scan which will help the doctor identify any physical deformities in the fetus. Common deformities of fetuses with Down syndrome would be a flattened nose bridge or neutral thickening. Neutral thickening could be characterized by a fluid buildup around the neck. So it seems like Erica's results are bad. Let's break the news to her. Erica? We have your test results. Unfortunately, there is a risk of your baby developing Down syndrome. What? Oh no. I, I can't believe this. But, but I've always controlled my diet and lifestyle. Well, Erica, there are several preventive measures that can be put into place to reduce the risk of your child having Down syndrome. One of it is to have children at a younger age, preferably before the age of 30. The consumption of folic acid supplements could help with reducing the risk of your child developing Down syndrome as well. Besides, regular antenatal screening should be conducted. This is to make sure that parents are well informed and will not be caught by surprise should their child be diagnosed with Down syndrome once they are born. I'm sorry Erica, but you really shouldn't blame yourself. Is, is my baby going to be cha cha? Oh no. No Erica. Screening tests are not definitive. We need to run a diagnostic test later on to confirm. Also, babies with Down syndrome are not cha Although they have certain disabilities, they are also very capable in many unique ways. What? What is Down syndrome, doctor? And, and how did this happen? Well, Down syndrome is a chromosomal disorder caused by the trisomy of chromosome 21. It sounds complicated, but let me make it easy for you. If we take a look at the karyotype of a person who does not have Down syndrome, there should be 23 pairs of chromosomes, which means that for each pair of chromosomes, there only should be 2 chromosomes for the pair. This karyotype belongs to a patient with Down syndrome. Could you identify where the abnormality might be? Yes, it's at chromosome 21. As you can see, instead of having 2 copies of chromosome 21, we have 3. This is the key diagnostic factor for Down syndrome. There are three main types of Down syndrome. Trisomy 21, where all cells in the body will have three copies of chromosome 21. Translocation Down syndrome, where all cells will also have three copies of the chromosome 21. And Mosaic Down syndrome, where not all cells will have three copies of the chromosome 21. The pathophysiology of Down syndrome is as such. The development of Down syndrome occurs randomly during meiosis which is a process where gametes or the sex cells are being formed. Genetic mistakes such as non-disjunction and translocation during the process of meiosis can lead to the development of Down syndrome. There are three main ways that Down syndrome can come about. The first one is known as non-disjunction. Non-disjunction occurs when the sister chromatids or homologous chromosomes fail to separate during meiosis. Also, Robertsonian translocation happens when chromosome 21 are in a pair. But, if we take a look at chromosome 14, there is an excess of chromosome 21 attached to chromosome 14, ultimately leading to Down syndrome. Mosaic Down syndrome is much rarer than the non-disjunction and Robertsonian translocation. 
Mosaic Down syndrome happens when the zygote has been formed. After a zygote has been formed, it undergoes mitosis for growth. During mitosis, two genetically identical daughter cells will be formed. Unfortunately, this process is also susceptible to genetic mistakes, which ultimately leads to the development of Down syndrome. There are three main risk factors for Down syndrome. Firstly, women who get pregnant above the age of 35 years old, hereditary Down syndrome which is relatively rare at 1%, having a previous child with Down syndrome also puts the woman at risk of having another child with Down syndrome. Patients with Down syndrome usually display several distinct physical clinical features, such as alopecia which is the balding of the head, microcephaly where the head is small, a flat forehead, hypertellurism where the eyes are far apart from each other, cirrhosis of the skin which is the hardening and the drying of the skin, and epicanthal folds which are distinct folds of the eyelid. The clinical features of Down syndrome are not just physical. Patients with Down syndrome are susceptible to cardiovascular disorders such as septal defects and tetralogy of fallot. They also have a high risk of developing gastrointestinal problems such as Merkel's diverticulum, duodenal atresia and imperforate anus. Endocrine disease such as Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis are also prevalent in patients with Down syndrome. Lastly, patients with Down syndrome may face problems with puberty, especially delayed puberty and, and having small testes. Alright doctor, so what now? We would need to run a diagnostic test to confirm if your baby has Down syndrome. Could, could you explain the procedure to me? There are three main tests that can be used to diagnose a fetus with Down syndrome. The first one is the chorionic virus sampling, which happens in the 10th or 12th week of pregnancy. This process involves the extraction of a placental sample, which will be used for biopsy later on. Ultrasound is used for navigation. Amniocentesis happens on the 18th week of pregnancy. This process involves the extraction of an amniotic fluid sample, which is fluid that surrounds the fetus. Again, ultrasound is used for navigation. The last test would be the percutaneous umbilical blood sampling, which happens on the 18th week of pregnancy as well. This process involves the extraction of a fetal blood sample from the umbilical cord. Ultrasound is used to navigate as well. Once these samples have been collected, these samples will be placed for genetic testing. A process known as karyotyping separates out all the chromosomes so that the doctor can identify any genetic disorders easily. After Erica heard this, she decided to go for the chorionic virus sampling since she's only pregnant for about 10 weeks. Here is week 12 after the chorionic virus sampling has been conducted. Erica, we're sorry to say, but we've diagnosed your baby with Down syndrome. <laughs> Erica, this must be really hard for you. We're all here to provide you and your child with the right support and care. It is important for you to know that a child with Down syndrome will experience many complications in their life. These complications can include respiratory infections, hearing difficulty due to hearing infections, stroke, embolism, anemia, leukemia, muscle weakness, vision loss, psychosocial problems, and early Alzheimer-like symptoms. Despite all this, this child without doubt will bring great joy to your life. We will make sure that your child undergoes proper management. As a matter of fact, this hospital will be providing therapy sessions for your child and yourself as well. These sessions will help your child develop the proper social skills needed to function in society. And if, touch wood, he experiences any symptomatic complications, this hospital will be happy to welcome him back for any symptomatic treatments as well. So, please do not worry Erica. We are all here to help you. Thank you for the reassurance, doctor. I'll, I'll make sure that this child grows up well too. That's good to hear. Please, contact me if you need any help. Thank you, doctor.